Welcome back all. Laura here. Alright, so if you did that correctly, you talked to Impa. You got a whole bunch of uh, main quests activated. You got Destroy Ganon going on, which I think that was already there. Uh, you should have the Divine Beasts, which would have marked your map. With uh, four flashing yellow points kind of spread out. And then Locked Memem Mementos, which is Hantano Village, which is over there flashing now. Which is where we're heading next. <clears throat> Alright folks, so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of finish up with Kakariko Village. Uh, Kakariko Village is kind of its own... I don't know, part of the storyline I guess you could say. So talk to everybody, take the time to do all that. Just because it's, um, it's a good read, it's a good watch. Uh, talk to this painter, he's going to want a picture of the Great Fairy Fountain, which we can't get yet. But I just wanted you to be aware of where he was. Uh, when we get to Hot No Village, get our Sheikah Slate fix, we'll be able to come back, take a picture of the Great Fairy Fountain. Uh, make sure you talk to this lady. She's going to befriend Link. And she'll be part of a side quest later on. Uh, one other thing I wanted to point out, talk to the farmers that are in town. Uh, both of them will give you a free piece of fruit, whether it be a pumpkin or a swift carrot, which is probably a vegetable, but whatever. Okay, so you're going to want your free pumpkin for a side quest in the Karak Forest when the time comes. I think the only thing we're missing now in my walkthrough is a Volfin Trout, which we'll get on the way to Rito Village. And this guy will give you a free swift carrot. Now, if you're here at night, the farmers won't be here and, you know, they'll have to come back during the daytime hours. But either way, you get some free goods out of the deal, so you might as well. Alright, what else is there here in town? Uh, we already went shopping. We got our Swift Carrots bot. We got our uh, Stealth Suit bot. We already got that upgraded to the Great Fairy Fountain. Uh, I always just recommend checking the trees. Oh, I wanted to point out one more thing. There is another treasure chest here behind Eva's house. And I didn't bother with it, but it's there if you want it. It's an eight-fold long blade at this stage in the game. Uh, if you go back later on in the game, that will be a edge duality. So a much better weapon. But of course, you got to wait until later on when you're getting better weapon drops. All right, so for now, I want to do a little bit of rock climbing. We're going to kind of head on up here uh, where you see these little teeny tiny ledges overhanging, sticking out. And those are going to be Karak Seeds. And we're real close to getting ourselves another weapon slot. 45 is the magic number for that. And I think we're up to about 40, 43 or something like that right now. Okay, while we're ascending the mountain top anyway, we might as well go over here to these uh, series of three trees. Get yet another Karak Seed. Go ahead and get yourself a little elevation before you head over. That's quite a climb. It might not look like it from here, but it is a little bit of a climb over there. So you got a standard fruit tree. Uh, three apples, I believe. Gotta match the fruit. There's also a lot of croc seeds on the tops of these little mountain peaks. Uh, as well as there's other goods. You might get some uh, food ingredients up there, or a loose weapon or something like that. I think there's even a treasure chest with another long distance bow, but it's kind of out of the way, so I'm not really going to go out of my way for those at the, this point in time. Be careful if you're going to use bombs and these guys pop up up here. You don't want to knock your trees down by accident. Which I've done, and then you have to come back after like a billion years go by. Come back! Alright, back to work. Come here. Alright, one other thing about 
shooting fruit down. If you stand on the proper side of the fruit, you can actually get your arrow back. Pretty neat little trick, especially if you're getting low on arrows. Any fruit you shoot down with your bow and arrow, you can always get your arrow back. That is assuming you can actually find the fruit wherever it happens to land. I don't know if this is a safe ledge or not. I don't think it is. Ah, sure is. Gotta take advantage of those resting points when I can. Save the stamina. So this is a really tall mountain peak here, but if you do it right, it's not that bad of a climb, as you can see. As promised, Crocseed. Alright, that's where we're at. So I'm going to hit like one or two more maybe while we're up here. Actually three, because there's another one by where I left my horse. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get on out of here and head toward Hontano Village. So that's our next hall. And it's going to be a little ways out. Actually, I'm going... Off to the right slightly. Okay, and there's actually one more, like, way over there. Uh, this is probably the tallest, I don't know, it's like this one maybe. Uh, but it's really out of the way, really hard climb. So we're going to come back when we get the climber's gear for that. Uh, for right now, let's go ahead and head back down toward our horse. We're going to get on out of here and head to Hot No. Why is Hot No important? Well, it's part of the storyline for one. Uh, for two, we're going to get our Sheikah Slate upgraded. Now, unfortunately, I'm still missing a couple of ancient shafts. Uh, normally, I don't have a problem at this stage in the game. Normally, I've got the three by now, just checking for my free monster parts that are laying in those decayed machines. But as you can see, I still only have the one. Uh, so that's an issue. But I'm going to show you guys where there's a field of those things. We can actually just kind of walk around and plunder them for free. So for now, let's go ahead and get a move on. I think I'm pretty much done croc seed hunting for the time being. Uh, there are a few more in the area, but like I said, they're more out of the way, and I think it's time we get a move on anyway. Okay, and we're going to head southbound out of here, so I'm actually facing the wrong way. This is riding back past where we found Hestu now, by the way. And as soon as we cross this bridge coming up, Kakriko Bridge, uh, we're going to want to hang a sharp left, and uh, that road will take us straight into Hot No. They even give you a handy dandy little sign here just in case you happen to get lost. You can read the sign and it'll point the way to where you need to go. I am an avid coffee drinker, so if you hear my coffee cup over here dinging around, that's what that noise is. One of the live joys of recording live is uh, you get to hear all that fun stuff going on in my background. Okay, so this big fort-looking wall here, this is Fort Hotno. We're going to go ahead and climb this fort wall here real quick.
You guessed it, Croc Seed time. Use the yellow rune if you're having trouble spotting them. Uh, not gonna lie, long distance bow here is probably gonna be your best bet. You just gotta really try to get the timing down right on these things. Yeah, I missed. Too early. Ah, nuts. Unfortunately, while you're screwing around, missing with your shots, you're putting wear and tear on that bow. But uh, not to worry, there's another long distance bow coming up real soon. Actually, it's on the way to Hunt No Village. There's a little bad boy nest. A lot of people don't know about it. They just kind of bypass it. And uh, there is a Traveler's Sword and a Phonics Bow there. So not a bad little deal. All right, so anyway, right outside the fort, right in front of the big wall here, you're going to see all these decayed monsters. Go ahead and get your free monster parts. A couple of them won't have them. They're too deep underground, I guess. But uh, most of them will. And I'm going to do this until I get my three ancient shafts, because this is absolutely ridiculous that I still don't have the three ancient shafts I need by this time in the game. Uh, this has never happened to me before, but to be honest. But uh, lucky us, we have plenty of these machines to plunder from. And look, I'm still not getting ancient shafts. This is redonkulous. Oh my goodness! Ancient screw! Does that... Is it just me, or does that sound really inappropriate to anyone? Ancient screw. Like a girlfriend you had a really long time ago, maybe? I don't know, just... To me, they just could have done better on the naming of some... Oh, ancient shaft! That doesn't sound much more appropriate, does it? Shaft. Okay, one more ancient shaft and we'll be out of here. There we go. All right, folks, so if you still don't have three ancient shafts by now, just roam around the field there. Uh, do be aware that one of those will turn itself on and start shooting at you. I think it's uh, one of these down this direction. Uh, in fact, I'll try to kind of warn you right around here. Stay away from this area. Do your hunting all around out here in this way. All right, moving right along. Continuing on down the fort wall, you will come to another little door. And... Uh, Proxy. Now, there's going to be two treasure chests behind this bad boy. One is a shield that I could care less about. So I'm not even going to open that second treasure chest. It's there if you want it. I think it's a uh, emblazoned shield or something like that. It's really low quality shield. So, anyway, I leave that shield there for picture-taking purposes later on in the game. Just in case I decide to take the pictures manually and not buy them. Now, I've been talking about pictures throughout my walkthrough. And, uh, some people like to get their own pictures, and that's fine. To each their own. Uh, me, personally, I work really hard on getting my silver enemies as early in my game as possible. So I take full advantage of that extra cash flow, and I don't worry about getting all these pictures manually because it's very time consuming, especially in my walkthrough. So what I'm going to do instead, uh-oh, uh, what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to go buy them from Fort or from Hot No Village, Ancient Tech Lab. Uh, they're expensive. It's probably going to cost like 50,000 rupees and all to buy all those pictures, but hey, what just happened? Okay, that was an epic fail. Link lost his footing up there for some reason, and now I gotta start over. Good times. Okay, that's how it worked out. That was weird. Whatever. Moving on. Hey, now. All right, so you can see there's lots and lots of gemstones to harvest up here. Uh, obviously, you're going to lose some to the overhang, which I will not climb down and go get, but you guys are welcome to do that if you so desire. Uh, what I'm really trying to do is just get to the top of this mountain here, 
And uh, there's some very lucrative gemstones up here that I'm looking for. Right here at the little top of the mountain peak. Uh, not only that, I'm going to show you guys where there's a nice little pond full of mighty carp. And swift violets, which I've already pointed out, are a very critical item to have in the game. Typically, swift violets are going to be gro uh, growing on your waterfalls. Especially around this area. Alright, so just to kind of give you a rough estimate where we are on the map at this point, now we are going to head over this direction toward this waterfall. So I'll go ahead and pin that for you. So we have a partial map for this little excursion. And we're not just coming out here for the mighty carp, there's also a couple of croc seeds and uh, some other goodies along the way. And just in case you missed the fire rod earlier on my walkthrough, there's another chance to get a fire rod here. So you can already have guessed croc seed. Okay, rough estimate on the map where we're at. Okay, moving on toward that pin now. <clears throat> ah, nuts. Don't run yourself out of stamina like a knucklehead. I guess I'm just getting in a hurry here. All right, so top of the waterfall is where we want to be. Ah, oh, crud. Uh, reason being, lots and lots of swift violets. And the reason I like the top of the waterfall is because I like to go ahead and drown myself intentionally at the bottom of the waterfall, and that teleports me all the way back up to the top of the waterfall so I can fly back down and gather more goods. And I'll show you guys how that works here in just a moment. Uh, first important safety tip, do not run around up here with only one heart. Because as soon as you drown, you will lose a heart. And, of course, if you only have one heart left, that will ultimately kill you. Alright, so enough about that. Let's go ahead and collect fish. Now, this is very fast-moving water up here. Do be aware of that. So, uh, you want to kind of be Johnny on the spot with that swim button or dash button, whatever. And see, once you get close enough to the waterfall, you're just going to go on over the edge. So, why fight it? All right, moving on. Go ahead and uh, grip onto the wall here and get you, get you some swift violets. Well, that's not gonna work out, so I'm just gonna go ahead and drown myself here. <clears throat> all right, so I'm not gonna spend all day, you know, fishing and doing all this stuff. I just wanted to show you guys how it works. Um, Link will automatically teleport back to where he had his uh, feet back on two feet. His own two feet on firm footing. Blah. Can't talk. All right. So anyway, you can kind of scale the wall here by flying and gliding down and collect your swift violets that way. Which, like I said, you need to do because you need these things. So unfortunately, I'm going to take a moment and get a few of these things. But uh, ultimately, what I'm going to do is end up over here on the other side. Now this is right below where Hestu was. Uh, remember the priceless maracas? We had to go fight those guys off and get the treasure chest. Oh yeah, you might find a beetle up here, by the way. Like I just did. So there's the priceless maraca treasure chest. That's where Hestu was. We were just down below that for a croc seed. Look for the fattest, tallest tree, climb it, and you will have a glistening, swirling pile of leaves at your disposal. Okay, we're going to fly across the river from there, and you will see a red dancing idiot, and he will have a fire rod. So like I said before, if you didn't get a fire rod, go ahead and get one now. Uh, one ice arrow, we'll go ahead and get him dead for you. And there's your fire rod. And you need that fire rod for a side quest in Hotno Village called the Weapon Connoisseur. We will need a Traveler Sword, a Fire Rod, and a Moblin Club. So if you don't already have those three items, 
uh, you can get a Moblin Club just off the Great Plateau. Just uh, go down toward the outskirts stable. There will be three Moblins down there. Uh, they all have Moblin Clubs. You can get a Traveler Sword on the way to Hot No Village, and I'll show you guys where that is here momentarily. And of course your fire rod, we just showed you where that was. Alright, so enough of this little spot. What we're going to do is we're going to exit the cave, heading southbound. And we're going to go immediately up into the left where these trees are. We're going to kind of scale the cliff wall here. Ooh, and I found another beetle. Awesome sauce! Okay, so just kind of scale this cliff wall, kind of going up at an angle so you're not wasting a bunch of stamina. Uh, not only that, there's another Karak seed right at the top of this little rock. Alright, getting a move on. This is the field of broken down machines we're going right past again. Uh, the road out to the south of us is where we rode in on and went through that big wall that you see up ahead. Uh, there's another gemstone that's noteworthy. I'll go, just go ahead and hit it with my weapon here so I'm not... You can see very lucrative on that one. Got a diamond and a topaz, baby. Gotta love it. Alright, so I'm gonna kinda get a move on because it's night time in my game and I want to show you guys where there's another shrine quest. Though we kinda need night hours to get the shrine to pop up. Uh, there's some honey in the area, but I'm not gonna take the time to harvest. Just for your own reference, there is some honey trees in this little forest. I think three or four in all. Okay, so for now I'm just going to get back on the road, and we're going to head out of the Fort Hotno area going northeast, and we're going to go by this little cave system. What we're going to do is we're going to look for this little opening, this little uh, valley off to our left. It's not really a road per se, it's just an opening that your horse can run through. And what I'm looking for is a statue with its eyes lit up. And I just found it. Actually, I'm not going to use a bomb arrow for that. And it only glows at night. Just smack it in the face with an arrow. And you will get your shrine that pops up. Alright folks, I'm going to go ahead and do a break in the video at this point. Uh, reason being, it's time to go get some shrines done. This is shrine number four. Every time I get four shrines... Uh, warp portals activated. I like to go back through and get the shrines done, get the spirit orbs, and then go trade those in for yet another stamina vessel. So we'll go ahead and take a quick break in video. When we come back, it'll be shrine time. <laughs> 